We all acquire language the same way. There are some things we all do the same. For example, digestion. We all digest food the same. There's no significant individual variation. First, you put it in your mouth, then you chew it, then it goes down your throat and into your stomach. That's how it's done everywhere. That's how it's done in North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa. That's how it's done everywhere in the world. What does this have to do with language learning? In this video, I'm going to talk about what is comprehensible input and how it's the one and only way to acquire a language. But first, welcome to Smart and Easy English. My name is Ben. I'm American and a native speaker from California. If you want to speak English natively and naturally, you're in the right place. You have found your channel. So be sure to click that subscribe button. Thanks. I'd like to give you two sample language lessons. I'll use a language that I'm sure you've heard before, and maybe some of you even speak. And let me know in the comments which of these two very brief lessons you like better. Here's lesson number one. Il Natale è la tua festa preferita? Per molti lo è. Soprattutto per i bambini perché amano scambiarsi regali, decorare l'albero e cantare canzoni di Natale. What do you think? Good lesson so far? Do you think if I kept talking to you like that, you'd pick up Italian? Not very likely. How about if I repeated it? Would that help? Probably not. What about if I said it louder? Would that help? Probably not. How about if I said it and you repeated it back again? I don't think that would help. How about if I wrote it out for you? You could see it on your screen. That wouldn't help either. How about if I wrote it out for you and you copied it down? The truth is that no. I did everything necessary.
to speak English out loud in the car as you drive to work. It will not help you to speak English to yourself in the bathroom mirror. On the other hand, if we could hang out for a couple of weeks, say an hour a day where I spoke English to you, I could keep the input light and lively, as in the second Italian lesson earlier. You'd start to acquire English. It would come on its own and eventually you'd start to talk. Your speaking ability would emerge gradually. There's a lot of evidence to suggest this is true. And the evidence is in professional literature, in books, journals, and papers. How would it be if you had to study another language but went to a class where you didn't have to say anything? Doesn't that sound wonderful? You can talk only if you want. You can raise your hand, you can volunteer, but no one's going to call on you. No one's going to put you on the spot. Also, in this perfect class, if the input is incomprehensible, it's the teacher's fault, not yours. Doing it this way, the results wouldn't just be a little better than other methods. They'd be much, much better. It's not that speaking is useless, but what counts is not what you say, but what the other person says to you. In other words, when you get involved in conversation, what's important is the input that you get from the other people. And you speaking to the other person will stimulate them to give you the input that you need. So it's good for students to speak, but we have to understand it makes an indirect, a helpful but indirect contribution to language acquisition. In summary, Comprehensible input is input you receive that you mostly, though not completely, understand. The input at a level just above your current level. The input is simplified so that you understand the message, the substance of what is being said to you. And this is the one and only way to acquire a language, according to Stephen Krashen.